Ali Abdal is an internet phenom, a guy with over 3 million subscribers on YouTube, someone who ranked first during his time at Cambridge when studying medicine, and currently he runs a business which is making millions of pounds each year. In this video, I'll be sharing some of the top lessons I learned when I met Ali in 2020 whilst he was still a doctor. Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. My name is Rohan, I'm a fourth year medical student studying at Cambridge University, in this video, I wanted to tell you about the time where I met Ali Abdal in person, when he came to give a talk at Girton College, Cambridge, and the talk was about time management, side projects, and enjoying life. This was a fascinating talk, and I took some notes in this little book, so I can still remember some of the lessons two years on to share with you guys. I think the talk itself came at an interesting time in Ali's life, because this was in February 2020, and he was saying that at this point he hadn't renewed his contract, to progress to the next stage of training to be a more senior doctor. So this led to a discussion about how we find our meaning in life, because for most people, and for most of us, we inevitably find our meaning as tied to our profession. Even when we introduce ourselves or we're getting to know someone for the first time, we inevitably say that we're, for example, a student studying medicine, or an engineer working at this company or a musician or whatever. However, in an ideal world, we shouldn't be defined by a job or a career, because we all have intrinsic self-worth independent of what we do. This is actually quite a Christian idea, because Christians believe we're all made in the image of God, and there's nothing that we can do to earn God's love. But anyway, we should be defined by other things such as what interests us, and these things might be related to our day job, or it might come from our hobbies or other things. This is a concept talked about in the podcast Not Overthinking, which Ali incidentally runs with his brother Tamor. And they've sometimes talked about playing this game where when they're meeting new people, they see which person could go the longest without asking the classic what do you do question. On a related point, Ali said, if we are to make a very simple life philosophy, we can either optimize for a life which gives happiness, so having fun in the moment, or a life which gives meaning, which is positively impacting the world. And he argued that in some cases, people in medical professions might drift towards optimizing for meaning rather than happiness. And he explained this by saying often the day-to-day -day of being a doctor is tough with long shifts or lots of admin, and that's not necessarily fun in the moment, but people still do it because at the end of the day, being a doctor is about helping the patient and this gives the job meaning. Ali's main message is that we should aim to set up our lives in such a way where we don't need to make this compromise and that we seek to do something that we find fulfilling, but fun at the same time. This will also make us more productive, and we'll talk about this later. There are many ways which we can have an impact and do something that is meaningful. Ali points out in other videos that we often overestimate the impact which a doctor makes, but underestimate the impact which other careers can make. So it's best that we are open-minded about what we do of our lives instead of restricting ourselves to a few fixed pathways, unless we are absolutely sure that that pathway is going to give us happiness and meaning down the line. He also added that nothing is ever fun as a full-time job, so if we can do a mixture of things, that would be ideal for most of us. Okay, in the next part of the talk, Ali talked about money. Money is so important because it ensures we have a certain level of living that keeps us healthy and not having to worry about where the next meal is coming from. But beyond a certain threshold, more wealth does not necessarily make us more happy, and therefore it doesn't make sense to keep pursuing money at the expense of other things. And he explained this using the parable of the Mexican fisherman. If you followed Ali's channel, he's probably mentioned this before, and I'll be reading directly from a blog post on Ali's website where he explains the parable, and I've linked this down below in the description box. So the parable goes as follows. An American investment banker was at the pier of a small coastal Mexican village when a small boat with just one fisherman docked. Inside the small boat were several large yellowfin tuna. The American complimented the Mexican on the quality of the fish and asked how long it took to catch them. The Mexican replied, only a little while. The American then asked why he didn't stay out longer to catch more fish. The Mexican said that he had enough to support his family and his family's immediate needs. The American asked, but what do you do the rest of your time? The Mexican fisherman said, I sleep late, I fish a little, I play with my children, take siestas with my wife, and stroll into the village each evening where I sip wine and play guitar with mis amigos. I have a full and busy life. The investment banker scoffed. You should spend more time fishing and with the proceeds buy a bigger boat and with the proceeds of that bigger boat you can buy several boats and eventually you'll have a fleet of fishing boats. Instead of selling your catch to the middleman, 
you can sell directly to the processor. You could control the product, and processing, and distribution. And of course, he added, you would need to leave the small coastal fishing village and move to Mexico City, then Los Angeles, and eventually New York City, where you run your expanding enterprise. The Mexican fisherman asked, but how long will all this take? The American replied, oh, 15 to 20 years or so. But what then? asked the Mexican. The American laughed and said, that's the best part. When the time is right, you can announce an IPO and sell your company's stock to the public and become very rich. You would make millions. But then what? said the Mexican. And the American said, then you could retire, move to a small coastal fishing village where you could sleep late, fish a little and play with your kids, take siestas with your wife and stroll to the village in the evenings where you could sip wine and play guitar with your amigos. So I hope you can all see the message which this parable is trying to convey. This story links with the theme of productivity because productivity can essentially be summed up as spending our time intentionally to achieve our goals. So if our goal is to live a happy and meaningful life, then above a certain level of wealth, it becomes less productive to keep grinding away and more productive to spend time with family and friends and pursuing other interests. So to tackle this conundrum of pursuing more wealth versus other things, the ideal scenario is to develop streams of passive income that are not dependent on you being physically there. Money should not shackle you to a full-time job. This is something Ali talks about a lot when in the past he's asked his doctor colleagues what they would do if they win the lottery. Half apparently would say that they'd stay in medicine but go part-time, and the other half said they'd leave medicine altogether. When Ali asked what was stopping them doing that now, the answer was invariably that they had bills to pay. This shows that most people work jobs they don't really enjoy because of money, so we should try, if possible, to aim for systems which give us a sort of financial freedom. And we can draw parallels of these lessons to studying. There's no point spending all day every day studying because it's unlikely to lead to much happiness unless there's something in studying which you find incredibly joyous. It's really important that we find the balance of yes, we try as hard as we can as in school or in work so we can achieve what we want. But we should also do things that bring us happiness and meaning. This is one of the reasons why I decided to start a YouTube channel because I thought I could help more people using this platform. Ali then made some points about time management. When addressing how to balance having a social life alongside work and studying, running like side businesses which he started during medical school and other hobbies. His main point was as long as you find these things enjoyable, you will somehow find time to fit these things into your timetable. But if you try to do things which are boring, this will inevitably lead to procrastination. And this is now one of Ali's core messages about productivity. Ali then started talking about how doing things on the side is not necessarily taking away from our overall competitiveness, for example, for job applications or university applications, these extra things which we can do can actually make us more appealing. He explained this using the concept of finding success through a third door. This is again something which Ali has talked about a lot, but if you imagine like success being like a nightclub, there's the main entrance where everyone kind of queues outside waiting to get in. There's kind of the VIP only entrance, which kind of represents people who have been dealt an exceptionally lucky hand in life. Maybe they had really rich parents so they could, I don't know, buy their way to into university or something. And most people think there are only these two ways of getting in to whatever your desired position is. But there's kind of this third door. And if you think about a nightclub, this might be walking around to the back, then jumping through a, the kitchen window, then making friends with the staff and then walking into the nightclub that way. Basically, he's saying there's always an unconventional path to what we want to achieve that may be more efficient than waiting in the metaphorical queue in the nightclub. There's a book by Alex Banian about this third door principle if you want to read about this more. Ali was talking about how him starting YouTube, even in the final year of medical school, was opening up opportunities which wouldn't have presented themselves if he'd only chosen to focus on medicine alone. Ali ended the talk by asking us to think what we are optimizing for in life. As students, the default is to optimize for the highest possible exam marks. This game kind of makes sense in school because it's typically only the top students in school who will go on to the most competitive universities. But at university, the objective is not quite as clear and sometimes the value on the very, very top marks is not quite as high maybe as they were at school. Hence, we shouldn't just assume that we need to only focus on exams at uni. We can pursue other things outside of our main degree. It's not wrong to try to maximize for exam success and it's something that I've done myself in the first two years and to an extent in exam term during third year. But if you're choosing to play the exams game, you should be intentional about your choice. And this point really stuck with me. And I remember at the end of the talk, I went and asked Ali, how do you balance like 
kind of the night social activities which are very common at university, like staying in each other's rooms late, just chatting or playing games. How do you balance that with also your 9am morning lectures? And Ali was so chill and he basically said prioritise hanging out and forget morning lectures, especially in first year, because ultimately uni will be the best time of your life socially, so make the most of it. And that was a response which really surprised me and kind of challenged my perception that every medic is just a book nerd which is just obsessing about their subject. So that brings us to the end of the video. If you want any more information about the concepts we've discussed in this video, head over to Ali's channel for more refined explanations on these things. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a like and consider subscribing to the channel for more content like this in the future. Anyway, take care and bye for now.